What's up guys, in this video I want to show you how you can deform n-gons here in Blender. I'm going to show you something pretty cool here. So I have an n-gon based mesh, a boolean cut, boolean cut chamfer, so you know n-gons here, 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 bottom, whatever. And on this object I have a quad based mesh, quads on the top, quads on the bottom, quads in the middle. So I'm going to show you a very uh, useful point case here. If I try to run a simple deform on this object, Check this out. Notice how nicely this deforms with very minimal shading issues until it really gets tight around this um, twist. But overall, it's very, very nice and smooth. Now check what happens if I try to run a simple deform on this object, which is full of quads. If I, you know, for now it works okay, but watch how just after a little bit, we get these really nasty shading errors, and it's just nowhere near as good as this one right here that does have n-gons. Same if I change the axis of rotation here, you're going to see uh, same effect, really nasty shading stretches, even at very low angles, um, you know, 22 degrees, 25, whatever, you can still see these nasty shading errors. The reason I make this point is to show you that it's not about it being full of quads or full of n-gons, but the fact that it all depends on your mesh density. So the reason this specific object right here is getting nasty shading errors, even with you know, a fully based quad mesh is because we have these really long quads. There's no even consistency there. So whenever this tries to deform, it can only deform from this point down to this point and everything in between is, um, you know, not very dense, just a very long stretched quad. Now, if I were to run some loop cuts through here and make it denser, maybe something like this, just make them all relatively square you're going to see that this is going to be a much better result. If I deform this, we're going to see very minimal shading issues um, compared to the last example. And if it still is pretty bad for you, you could, of course, just uh, you know subdivide this and make it denser. So we'll try it again. And you're going to see the denser the object, the less nasty shading issues we have. Now, this isn't a shading issue. This has to do with the auto smooth angle, and we can always play with that. But, um, you know, I, I, I make this point to show you that it's not about n-gons or quads. It's about how heavy your mesh is. So let me go ahead and show you an n-gon example. So I'm going to go ahead and run a few bullying cuts in this cube here. And if you hear fireworks outside, apologies, 4th of July here. And people like to blast fireworks, apparently. Um, not my thing, but, you know, to each their own. Okay, so we have this... Um, it's, a, it's an n-gon based mesh, right? Now, this is not going to deform very nicely at all. If I run a simple deform, it is just going to collapse and be a mess. Now, applying that same example I showed you with the cylinder, if we make this mesh denser and denser and denser, it's going to get smoother and smoother and smoother. Now, the tricky part with n-gons is not the fact that um, it has n-gons, but the fact that you can't run loop cuts through it like I did in the cylinder. That's where it gets tricky and where it trips people up. So uh, generally what you need to do when you have n-gons and want to deform them is you need to run knife projects through it. And you can do it one of two ways. The easiest way is with hard ops. Just come in here to mesh tools, go to dice, control click on dice, and just scroll up or down and make this thing really, really dense. And it's going to run some loop cuts automatically through those n-gons. And now when I run a simple deform, you're going to see we have a lot more deformation going on because we have a lot more geometry. Now, if you don't have um, hard ops, you can do a knife project in the much longer way, which is by running a plane. We add in a plane, we rotate it, and we basically, um, you know, subdivide this plane a lot of times. And then we move it into the front. X, delete only faces, and then we can run a knife project by shift clicking here, um, tabbing into edit mode, and then going to mesh knife project. And you'd have to do this on um, the other side as well. You can click on cut through right here to cut through. You can't see it, but it's on the bottom left. There's an option for cut through, and you can click on that, and it'll cut through any areas you can't see. But you're also going to have to go to these other sides as well and do a knife project that way. It's just very tedious, which is why I'd recommend just using hard ops for that. But um, that's it. That's all you need to do. If you want to deform n-gons, you need to simply increase the mesh density. So whenever people are saying, oh, you can deform quads, but you can't deform n-gons, it's not true. 
it's not the fact that there's n-gons or the fact that there's quads, it's the fact that their mesh is not dense enough. Now, of course, you know, it's a lot more ideal to have a fully quad-based mesh. You know, this, for example, is going to deform a lot cleaner than an n-gon mesh that I just ran some knife projects through that gives you pretty sloppy results uh, around the edges, right? Like, this is just not going to be as clean when I deform it as this one will be, not to mention that I can easily subdivide this one and get very even consistency compared to this, where if I subdivide it, we're just going to get these really nasty higher dense areas. But the point isn't to have as much cleanliness as it is to just be able to quickly get up and running and deform things. Plus, most of the time, if you have a much more complex angon based mesh, um, retopologizing that into quads just for the sake of being able to deform it is a complete waste of time, especially if it's just a concept render. You're much better off just doing the knife project option I showed you here and, you know, getting a little bit you know, rough around the edges, but you're just saving a lot of time. So, like I said, um, you can deform n-gons, you can deform quads. It depends on how you use it. The quad method is always going to give you much cleaner results. I'll even show you. Check out this deform, very clean, whereas this deform is going to be a little bit, you know, oops, wrong one, a little bit iffy around the edges, most likely, um, compared to this one. But, they both get you the result you want and it looks good and that's really what matters. So just as a conclusion, if you want to deform n-gons, increase the mesh density by running knife projects or just use the dice tool here in HardOps. Super easy, it's one click and um, you have high resolution mesh and you can deform it even though it's a little bit rough around the edges. Whereas if you have a quad based mesh, yes, it will be a bit cleaner, but it's also going to be a lot more time retopologizing if your mesh was already full of n-gons. So hopefully this kind of gave you a more you know, intuitive feeling as to how that works and um, kind of gives you a way to think about how to approach your objects. And if it's better to just you know run a dice, for example, on an n-gon mesh, or if it's better to just do a completely quad based mesh from scratch, it depends on what you're doing. Um, you know, for concept renders or to simple art pieces, this strategy, just running of dice, is going to be your best bet. Way quicker, way less time wasted. Uh, anyways, that's about it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, drop a subscription. I make videos like this all the time. Really appreciate it. And uh, that's about it. See ya.